Pick up your gear and open your chest. Throw on your armor and head out on a quest. Hey, hey. It's a brand new day. On the sword coast, the allies will help with blades and bows and magic as well. Hey, hey. Heroes on their way. Fighting forever against overwhelming odds. Fighting together in favor of multiple gods. Idle champions of the forgotten. Is I, Garwar, the artist. Oh no, Gabe changed it. Dang it, we were streaming his art for a second. I was like, finally, I am an artist. Thanks, Gabe. Hmm. Anyway, it's Saturday. Welcome to Garwar's Guide, the tutorial show. Love you, Gabe. Uh, Gabe is with me in the production booth, everybody. Shout out to Gabe. Gabe's going to be uh, watching chat and also grabbing questions, because on this show, uh, I talk for like an hour. And I know some of you are like, you do that on all your shows. But no, really, like all I do is talk and I don't answer the questions for like an hour on the topic. And then in the second half of the show, uh, I answer all the questions that came in and any more that come in. So... Uh, so please, you know, if you have questions about the game, gameplay, game mechanics, systems, etc., even beyond our today's topic of Fleet's Wake Year 7, uh, put them in chat and I'll answer them. Disclaimer, I am not a direct employee of Codename Entertainment. I don't make any of their things. Uh, I just, I make guides. Over on the subreddit, there's, uh... There's 170, there's like over 107, just barely. I think we hit 170 recently, folks. That's a milestone uh, of currently updated and I mean, mostly accurate guides. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of changes title champions having all the time. So uh, they're mostly, mostly accurate. Uh, all pretty much, in, you know, aimed at, at explaining concepts to, to newer people. Or people who are just running into that uh, system or, or champion for the first time. So, uh, check them out. Uh, yeah. So, that's why I'm here. Why are you here? No, wait, I know why you're here. You're here to hear about Fleet's Wake Year 7, the final event 1.0 ever. Pour one out for events. Oh, oh I'm glad that was closed. That would have been messy. <laughs> Pour one out for Events 1.0, folks, because this is the last one ever, and if you didn't know that, well, surprise. Surprise. This Now, this is the last Events 1.0 ever, 
But events 2.0 are arriving March 6th. Put it on your calendar, folks. I know, that's real quick. It's like, didn't we, we just started this event, and then there's another one going to happen on March 6th? Yeah. Yeah, Fleet's Wake is going to run through, uh, start to start it on the, the, the February 21st. It's going to end on Monday, March 4th. We're going to have an event 2.0, the new shebang on March 6th. So join us uh, then for that. But for right now, join us here for this. This is this is why I'm an artist, folks. <laughs> Join us here for this. Um, so we're going to talk about events 1.0. We're going to talk about the final one. We're talking about Fleet's Wake, and we're going to talk about all three champions that are here as a part of Fleet's Wake. We're going to go over how events in this system work, but please know this is going to help you out for this system and stand as a historical record of how events 1.0 worked. But uh, things are going to change. In the next system and you can feel free uh for the q a portion feel free to toss questions in chat about events 2.0 if you want i will get to them later but right now we're going to do this right right now we're going to do this okay so if you're like me and i know i am uh you spend a lot of time looking at the map screen and wondering what the heck you're going to do next uh this is what it normally looks like the grand tour of the sword coast down to turn of fortune's wheel with time gates and 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 there's always a trials adventure waiting for me because i always forget to do it shout out to my pre-made i will get it done i promise <laughs> i will get it done i promise i got you uh, but whenever an event arrives, this banner gets bumped down by one, and you get the event at the top. And this one is Fleet's Wake. Uh, Fleet's Wake, uh, you know, you would think would just be all about uh, pirates. But no, they actually put other kinds of champions in this event. I know, I know. I don't even think there's been a single pirate. It's disappointing. But uh, I go on with my life. Uh, events are basically mini-campaigns uh, where... <laughs> I'm sorry. This is this is me sending uh, events 1.0 uh, off to a farm uh, via a roast. I guess I don't know. I don't know. We're doing. I'm doing my best, folks. <laughs> I'm doing my best. Uh, events are basically mini campaigns in the current system, uh, where basically you start fresh with zero favor and you have to build up favor to be able to complete content. Um, but you can earn it, uh, you can earn favor quicker because gold drops, uh, at a, at a faster rate and enemy health is lower. So you can push deeper than ever in events. So, uh, it's, they make it very quick and, and enjoyable. Honestly, a lot of people set their highest push ever, uh, uh, milestones in events because it is uh, it is an easier place to push deep. So don't be scared by the fact that you're starting fresh. Just hop in and, and get stuff done. Uh, so favor is going to show up in the top right corner up here. Uh, and then beneath that, there's going to be these things called fresh fish. And you're like, what's that? And it's like, it's food, folks. Oh, no, no. Actually, in this, it's event tokens. Event tokens are basically things that let current in the current system let you start adventures and variants and free plays. Um, yeah, it's like a, it's a little bit of a limiter. They put on things, uh, they drop uh, just as you're killing things in the game, one every 25 seconds. So it's a time-based currency. Uh, but time-based currency means you can get more of it from bounty contracts because bounty contracts drop time-based currency. That's why I have a lot of fresh fish. It isn't because I've earned this many over time. It's because I, I popped a lot of bounty contracts. Okay. Uh, there isn't any other way to speed up the rate of gain. It doesn't matter how many background parties you have, of which I have, I have all of them, uh, or a speed champ or any of that. It just, it's just, it's server side time. There's no way to manipulate it other than bounty contracts. Okay. Uh, now you get one adventure node and you get uh, in this system, you get three champions to unlock. It's always the newest champion, which this year is Dinahair. Welcome to the game, Dinahair. Uh, last year it was Solok and the year before that it was Desmond. So, uh, you get, you know, in this system, you get the newest champion plus the two prior ones. Uh, all other champions that arrived in this event are, you know, in under this available only via time gates. Uh, that's it's going to be changing. It's going to be changing. Uh, but this is how it works right now. So, uh, when you first do this, your adventure reward is the champion itself. This is how you unlock Desmond, Solok, and Dinahair. You only ever have to complete Area 50. It's super easy. Idle Champions makes it super easy for you to unlock all the champions. Uh, so, you just do a, this minimum goal. You unlock the champion and we, then you can start using them right away. 
Um, now, each champion comes with kind of their own mini version of the event, uh, and that means they have a, a unique formation uh, to them. Uh, but but this event, these three champions share the same enemies that they're fighting, so you're running into the same bosses. So you can get used to, you can learn how to take care of the boss in Fleet's Wake, which, uh, yeah, uh, it's it's neat. I like it. Uh, we'll talk about it when we get there. Uh, but the formation is going to be different. So, uh, yeah, there may be some formations that are better for pushing deep than others. Uh, for instance, here, Desmond's gives us a, a, a two champion front line, lots of adjacencies. It's pretty solid for pushing. Solok gives us a one champion front line, but still lots of adjacencies. Still good for pushing as long as you've got a survivable tank. And Dinah here, single tank front line, lots of adjacencies. So again, all, all three, which means all three of these are good for pushing. Now, how good is really going to depend on the champions you're using and how well they fit into each of these scenarios. Uh, you're going to have to determine uh, which is best for you. Sometimes with newer players, if they don't have super survivable tanks, spreading that damage across two, a two champion front line is, is more helpful and you might find that you can push deeper here. It depends. You're just going to have to test it out, but that's fine. You're going to earn a lot of fish over the course of the 12 days of the event, um, and and you'll be able to try different uh, deep runs in each of these. Okay. Uh, so one of the ways you earn favor is just in the event initial adventure unlocks uh, to unlock the champions. Just push deep. Don't don't complete it right away because you need to earn fa as much favor as you can. You don't need as much as I have over here. Uh, you need to, you know, the target is about E08 favor. In this house, we use scientific notation. Why? Yes, why? Press Y on your keyboard to turn on scientific notation if you haven't yet. Uh, that's, that's, that's just, it's easier, folks, when we're talking about numbers. Uh, so, uh, E08 or higher is, is what you're looking for. I think it's 1.5 E08. I think sometimes I'm like 5 E08. I mean, I'd do it too, but basically we want to try to make sure that the adventures are as easy as possible as well as the variants that unlock once you complete them. And to make them all show as difficulty easy, you need 1.5 E08 favor or higher. Um, so earning that in the initial unlock adventures is great. If you don't, then you hop back in and you do a free play. Now, the free plays also, as along with getting you favor, also earn you a random chest in this system. It can either be a silver or gold, and you just have to complete area 50. So... Uh, I use my Modron core to set up automation to 51 because I'm scared of having it re reset at 50. Uh, and it just cycles and I earn lots of chests, right? This is how you get gear for your champions as you do free plays over and over. Um, that's the best and most efficient way to do it in events 1.0. Right now, the variants all reward you uh, a guaranteed gold chest. You don't see it because I already did them all, but they would guarantee you a gold chest. So the three variants mean you're going to guarantee yourself three gold chests. And then after that, you're going to do free plays. Um, and and the chances are one in three of getting a gold chest. Uh, and beyond that, so that means, you know, one out of every three free plays on average, you'll get a gold chest. However, because RNG is what it is, they've put in bad luck protection, aka a pity timer, uh, for these runs. So even if you get three silvers in a row for Desmond, the fourth run for Desmond going to guarantee you a gold chest. So no matter what your luck, you're still going to earn golds. All right. All right, uh, let's dive in and talk about... Oh, the cost for everything is going to go up. Uh, free plays start at 500 fresh fish and max out at 2,500. Uh, that means you'll just be doing them for 2,500 a pop over and over and over again uh, once you get once you get to the max. But it affords you a few cheaper uh, chests in this system. Uh, and that's it. Uh, let's talk about uh, the variants. Let's dive into Desmond's first. So uh, the, the, the way the variants work is the completion area is going to be always the same. The first variant is 75, the second is 125, and the third is 175. The challenge here is the restrictions written in the text box, okay? So you need to, this is, you know, it, it, for all variants in this game, you need to read the restrictions because the area goal isn't the big problem. The restrictions are, and this is why generally if you're trying to push deep and farm favor, you do it in free plays because 99% of the time a variant's going to make it harder for you to push in. 
So don't try to don't necessarily try to push for favor in, in in a variant. In a free play, push as far as you can, earn as much favor as you can. In variants, complete the area goal and bounce. Just just get out and go do something else. Okay. All right. Uh, so in full moon madness, Desmond joins the formation. He can't be moved or removed from the formation. We're going to see this things like this a lot. Now, when it says he can't be moved, they show you down here in the formation a C. This white C down here, that means that's for champion. That's where Desmond's going to be. So uh, you find your Desmond there. Hold on, I just feel like we need to adjust that. Okay. Uh, all right, find your Desmond there. Uh, and now, if it says he can be moved but can't be removed, they won't show a C, and it just means they're going to load him in and you can put him anywhere you want. Okay. We're going to see that probably in most, if not all of these. Uh, now the real restriction comes in because all of these are designed to help you understand uh, how to use the champion. In non-boss areas, each wave creates an extra three to five random sailors. They do not drop gold or count towards quest progress. Basically, this is just, it's, I call this a swarm variant. They're just trying to overwhelm you with enemies. Um, not super challenging unless you're running a single target DPS, uh, in which case then it can be a problem for your tank, right? because you're not clearing them off enough. But you've got ultimates for that. So there's ways around it. Not a huge restriction. Uh, down here, it's just getting no Desmond, and we're going to do that uh, once we bring up the champions. So that's it. That's It's just, hey, there's a lot of things to kill. Welcome to idle champions. I mean, not too bad of a restriction. New Moon Nemesis. Desmond joins the formation. He can't be moved or removed from the formation. Again, they show you where he's going to put right here now. In non-boss areas, each wave spawns one additional armored crab with 10 armored HP. It does not drop gold nor count towards quest progress. Every time a crab spawns, a random champion is stunned until it is defeated. So, every wave, which means every few seconds, an armored crab is going to come out and a champion is going to get stunned. This is more of a restriction in two ways. One, the first off, the stun. This means you're going to need to potentially rely a little bit on uh, click damage early on and maybe fire breath potions later on just to make sure you're continuing to do damage even when your champions are stunned. Um, however, the big one is the armored crab. If you haven't run into armor yet, armor is a, a, a part of a segmented health system. There are two kinds of segmented health. One is hit-based and one is armored. Armor, you'll see lots of little chunks instead of just a smooth uh, red health bar on an enemy. It's going to be lots of little chunks of health. Uh, in this case, the 10 armored HP might be, it could be five yellow with five red beneath it, or it could be just be 10 red. I can't, I can't, honestly can't remember. It's probably the five and five. That's used to be usually how they do it. Uh, anyway, you need a minimum amount of damage to break one armor segment. You can only ever remove one segment at a time per hit. This is this is the system that segmented health segmented health basically creates uh, the need for some survivability in your formation because you can't just one shot things. So what you're looking for are multi hit champions. Uh, so whose base attacks do multiple hits. This can be a Shara. Uh, out of your your core uh, 12 champions. It can be Hitch as the kind of the first evergreen you get from signing up for the newsletter. Um, I know Hitch isn't a DPS, but he's a super secret one. Now you know. Uh, so anybody that has the, that releases multiple attacks at once can remove multiple segments as long as you're doing enough damage. Okay. Uh, so that's what they're looking for here. They're looking for you to, uh, you know, do lots of hits quickly. Uh, potentially use uh, some segmented stuff. Uh, and there's some Desmond stuff that we'll talk about that could potentially help. Right? All right, now we get Strength to Persevere. Now, uh, there's a lot of red down in that formation box. A lot of red X's. Don't be scared. Uh, X usually means you can't put a champion there. And I know there's an X everywhere, but th there's we got to read the restriction to see what's going on. Only champions with a strength of 16 or higher may be used. So right off the bat, a pretty solid restriction. You're going to need a you need a specific set of champions for this. Um, and uh, as always, favor is the thing in events that you hit that you beat things with. Uh, so you know you might need a little more favor, but you can always. Uh, but we'll see, right? Uh, a werewolf starts in the formation. An additional werewolf joins the formation every 50 areas. So right off the bat, you're down a champion. And every time you hit, you beat area 50, you're going to be down another champion. So 
uh, you're going to lose one at 50. You, you lose one initially. You lose one at 50. You lose one at 100. You lose one at 150. So you're going to have to finish your, your push with just six champions. Uh, that's a lot of power lost. So you make up for that power usually with by getting a lot more favor. It is, e again, 1.5 EO8 to make this show as easy. You might be able to do it with that as long as you've got six solid champions, but you might not. And the way you find out is you actually go into, uh, you can go into a free play and you can test it. You can test out, can I build a formation with six champions uh, and push past 175? You probably want to aim for like 200, 225, if you can get to that easily, yeah, then you can come try this out. Okay, uh, but it's going to be pretty challenging simply because of the, the strength 16 plus restriction and the fact that you're losing uh, champion slots. Okay. For Solok, on the wings of dragons, Solok, Tempest, and Levitz join the formation. Levitz can be moved, but not removed. This may sound strange. Why is there three things being added when there's only one champion? It'll make sense when we get to Solok. <laughs> you may only use champions with a dex of 13 or higher. So there's another stat restriction. Okay, uh, again, you're just going to have to try this out. Uh, area 75. Honestly, Area 75 is super easy. As long as it shows green easy. As long as even just this shows is green easy, even even not these, you should be able to get through Area 75. It might just be slow, right? But if they all show as easy, uh, no problem. No problem whatsoever. Slings and arrows. Once again, the trio joins the formation. Can be moved, but not removed. The base attack cooldowns of champions with magic and melee base attacks are increased by 10 seconds. What they're trying to do here is encourage you to use a ranged DPS. Ranged DPS. Um, yeah. Otherwise, real slow wave clear. Real slow wave clear. Which, you know, again, isn't the worst thing in the world. Uh, you can use fire breath potions to, to let your melee champion hit once. And then ride that damage with a fire breath potion and a clicker on the field. Uh... And you can do that too. It's just going to be slow, folks. So, you know, if you can build a formation with a ranged DPS champion that you're buffing, then, then that gets rid of this restriction. Uh, a scaly companion. Uh, so again, uh, the trio joins and can be moved around, but not removed. But a bronze dragon joins the formation as an escort, and they take up three champion slots. Dragons are big, folks. It's just in. Dragons are big. You heard it here first. Uh, so, uh, it doesn't do anything, though. It's just escorting the formation. Now, I'm going to tell you, uh, obviously, A, you're down some power here. Uh, but B, what a great timing. Uh, time to get Desmond. <laughs> uh, uh, spoilers, Desmond has an ability that buffs based off uh, escorts in the formation. And Desmond can help you out here a little bit, too. But... You should, again, as long as this shows is green, you should be fine. Uh, yeah, because there are no other restrictions. You're just down three champions. Uh, but you should be more than, you should have more than enough power uh, to get through this as long as it shows is green. Uh, and, and throw Desmond in. Throw Desmond in and enjoy. Uh, all right, on to Dynahair's variants. The Wicklaren of Rashomon. This one scared me when I first saw it. I was like, new players aren't gonna are gonna have a big problem with this, but but you're fine. I I was I went and ran it, and it's it, you're fine. Again, as long as everything is still green, uh, you you'll go right through these. Don't be scared. So Dynahair joins the formation. She can move, be moved, but not removed. You may only use champions with a con of 15 or higher. I was like, there's not that many. And there aren't. Uh, in the core champions, if you're like a brand new player, uh, you've got like, by the time you get to 75, unless you have a lot of favor, you may only have four champions on the field. You can do it. Uh, I tested it out on, a, on, a, on, a, um, on an account with no gear, no perks, no blessings. No Modron core, nothing. Uh, with only like, I uh, had uh, a thousand favor, which is EO3, and, and you should have EO4, some, EO4 in the EO4s before you start this. So you should have 10,000 or higher 
before you start this. I did it with a thousand favor and I beat it, but I had to stop and grind. It took me about an hour to get through it. Um, so you're fine. Uh, you're, you're, you're fine. Uh, just make sure you have you, that this shows is difficult to easy and you will get through this even though there's only a few champions, even though you only have a few champions. Tip I will recommend if you are trying it at lower favor amounts, uh, level up your click damage. It's gonna, it's gonna help and have a familiar on the field. It's, it's gonna help. I mean, you wanna, you wanna level up your champions too. Um, but the better, the better tip is fire breath potion. Fire breath potion. Basic fire breath potion and a familiar on the field and then, and, and level up your champions and, and you'll burn right through everything. Still got to level up your champions, though, for the boss. Uh, so Thayan Thread is the second one. Dinahair joins the formation and can be moved, but not removed. Uh, quest requirements are increased by 25% in non-boss areas. So that thing where you got to collect 25 of this or kill 25 of that, you got to do 25% more of that stuff. A red wizard spawns with every wave in non-boss areas. So, uh, spoiler alert, Dinahair has a speed effect. And her speed effect is based off killing red wizards. Uh, when you kill a red wizard, she reduces your quest requirements, which is what they're, they're basically artificially inflated. It's like, it's like a Black Friday sale. They've artificially inflated the prices and then they're giving you a discount and making it seem like you're getting something special. That's what's going on with this, with this variant. This is the Black Friday variant. That's what I'm going to call them from now on. Minsk's Degemma, Dinahair and Minsk join the formation. They can be moved but not removed. You may not use tanking champions. This is another spoiler alert, folks. Uh, Dinahair has the ability to turn Minsk into a tank. First time we've ever had something like this. So you're going to throw Minsk up in the front uh, and he's going to fall over for a while until you can level up the ability that turns him into a tank because for some reason they didn't give it to you from the start. But it'll be fine. You, you, you'll be fine. You should have a lot of favor. He shouldn't get hit for a very long time. And by the time he does get hit, he'll be a tank. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. All right, let's hop into an unfair sea Dinahair adventure, uh, and we'll talk about each of the champions. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, let me throw some familiars out to get rid of all of this mess. Go away. I don't want to see. All right. Uh, I mean, I want to throw Minsk in, but he's not part of this event. He kind of is. Desmond. Uh, no, Solok is here. Yes. Okay. Solok. Oh, my. Do you see Solok in the back? Folks, this is Levitz. Levitz is the, the dragon familiar. This is Levitz. <laughs> They're doing the wave back here. This is Levitz. Solok is on the dragon in the back. Levitz gets moved around in the formation. Solok is always in the back. Okay, this is Desmond. Uh, and Dinah hair bouncing here and there and everywhere. And she's brand new, so I can't remember where. She is Dinah hair. There she is. She's three. <laughs> All right. Uh, maybe I'll look at it like this. There. That works. That works, right? That works. Ah. New champion, who dis? Uh, all right, let's talk about Desmond first. Desmond comes to us from the Black Dice Society. It is a completed affiliation, so that means you can find all the members in the game currently and unlock them in events or time gates. Uh, yeah, male human ranger. One of the things they're going to leave out. Spoiler alert: he a werewolf. Uh, chaotic good and support. He's a support champion. His base attack, despite wielding two swords, is a crossbow ranged. There is another, uh, there is another melee. We'll get it. He does count as melee, but he's a ranged attack. Desmond shoots the closest enemy with his hand crossbow, knocking them back a bit, back a bit, which is a good tie in for our soul lock when we get there. Base ability, noble heart. This increases the damage of champions adjacent to Desmond. So this is a positional formation ability. You want to put Desmond next to your DPS. Howl at the moon. Desmond synergizes with the moon phases, reducing the attack cooldown of himself and adjacent champions. The closer to the full moon, the more the cooldown is reduced. At the start of each full moon, Desmond's ultimate cooldown fully resets. I want to be clear, this is an in-game mechanic. 
This has nothing to do with the real world phases of the moon. <laughs> just, just in case. Look, he's got an overlay. He's got an overlay so you know what phase of the moon it is. In case people might have been thinking, wait, what, what time of the month is this? Where, what's the phase? No, it's, it's this. He cycles through the phases fairly, fairly quickly. Uh, and we can, we can adjust that. Uh, the next ability, Devotion in Dark Times. The dark side of the moon increases the effect of Noble Heart dependent on how close the new moon is. So everything about Desmond is, resol is revolving around the phases of the moon. Um, so you want to you wanna keep an eye on that. Like, see, we're going through. We're almost, uh, it's almost gone. Uh, because the specializations are going to modify this. Okay. So double time, embrace the beast or strengthen numbers. So double time, the moon cycle of Howl at the Moon is twice as fast, recharging Desmond's ultimate attack more often. Because again, uh, when you get that uh, reset of the moon phase, start of each full moon, uh, it, it resets his ultimate. Now we don't have his ultimate yet, uh, but if you were to hit his ultimate right before the new moon arrives, you'd get it back again right away. Once the new moon hits, you get it back. You don't have to wait for the cooldown because it's just about the, the phase of the moon. It's really neat. So uh, you, can, you can get his ultimate more often if you want, and that's why a double time. Embrace the Beast additively increases the base attack cooldown reduction that Desmond's Howl at the Moon provides by a half a second. In addition, the full moon of Howl at the Moon takes 30 seconds, while the new moon and crescent moons only take 10 seconds. This effectively puts you into boosting attack speed reduction mode. That's what this does. It gives you some flat boosts, and then it gives you a lot more based off the phase of the moon. So if you want to attack, if you want your attack speed super high, you embrace the beast. This is one where, like, when you're dealing with those armored uh, crabs, embrace the beast. Because you're going to speed up uh, everybody adjacent to Desmond. Everyone's going to get faster attacks. Uh, for a longer period of time, you're going to chew through those armored segments faster. Okay, strength of numbers, de devotion to dark times. This is the buff gets an 100% additive buff. In addition, the new moon of Howl at the Moon takes 30 seconds, while the full moon and Gibbous moons only take 10 seconds. If you want straight buffing power more often, you go strength in numbers. So, use the ultimate more often, double time, more attack speed more often, embrace the beast, more power. Strength in numbers. All right. Uh, we're just going to get the ultimate back faster because I'm not going to be pushing here, really. Do, 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 do. And then we're going to do the ultimate. The ultimate, uh, shocker, I know. Unleash the beast. Desmond transforms into his werewolf form and leaps at the enemy with the most hit points. He swipes with both claws, then bites them. That's three attacks. Then returns to the formation and back to human form. Noble Heart gets a 300% increase for 30 seconds. So you get a power buff, as well as three attacks from the wolf, which on the thing with the biggest health, which is usually a boss, right? And so that means if you have enough damage uh, on a segmented health, like a hit based, there go three chunks. Uh, whether you could take enough out on armored, uh, like maybe at low levels, but not at high levels, right? Here's what it looks like. Boom, wolf. And then we change levels. Dang. Anyway, he's going to change back once he gets back to the formation anyway. But look, my timer is almost back to zero again. Like, ready? Ready? Boom, wolf. See? That phase of the moon got it back for me right away. And now i got to wait a minute. Because now it's going to take a minute to get all the way back to that phase of the moon. But I got basically got double ultimate. Um, and one of the good ways to do that is because the buff lasts for 30 seconds. Is to do it about halfway through. Hit it. Get that buff going for 30 seconds. Get it back. Hit it again. You can keep that buff just going continuously uh, in this phase where it's moving faster. All right. Uh, if you want to play a manual game, not everybody does, but you can if you'd like with double time. Running with the pack increases the effect of Noble Heart specifically on lycanthropes. I'm going to pause here. Lycanthropes means werewolves. However, Dungeons and Dragons has decided anything that is a wear something is a lycanthrope. So that means werewolves, wear tigers, wear wear all stuff. Yeah. 
kills me every time. So, uh, buffs increases the buff on Lycanthropes, Druids, and Black Dice Society Champions. So, uh, they are obviously targeting their own society for this, but also they're going to buff uh, fellow Lycanthropes and Druids. It does. This fact wears on my patience. Yes, it does. Every time. Lament the Lost. Damage. This is This is the big one, folks. This is the big one. Lament the loss. Desmond increases the damage of all champions by an amount, stacking multiplicatively. That's the good way. For each slot in the formation that contains a dead champion or is taken up by an escort character or object. This is why you use Desmond uh, when you have a lot of formation slots lost to escorts. Okay. Uh, so in that other variant, like his variant where you keep getting werewolves, that's okay. It's just feeding his power. Uh, the variant where, uh, Solox variant with a dragon, throw Desmond in three slots that feeds his power. It's obviously best if you have two or more so that you can get the multiplicatively stacking. That's the huge power boost. Um, but if there's only one escort slot, just add a dead champion. That doesn't mean kill off one of your champions. That means add a champion that counts as dead. There are champions in the game that count as dead, like Spurt and Voronika. And, 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 and yeah, there's more. But the blue she in certain phases. You can build formations built around these kind of dead champions. And, and if you add that in with escorts, this gets real big. Now, this does have item support, um, and it does apply to the pre-stack. That makes this a very strong ability. Uh, this is a pre-stack value. Uh, so it does need item support to get super huge. Uh, but, but right off the bat, you're getting a multiplicatively stacking ability. Uh, and that can be just, that's stronger than most abilities. Uh, when you actually give it item support, then it becomes a bit OP. Now it is a very specific situation, but just know the first thing, the first, whenever you see, when now that you have Desmond, whenever you see a variant that has a lot of escorts in it, Desmond's your boy. If you can get him into that variant, he's going to give you a major buff. And if you can add any dead champions to that, it gets even bigger. Okay. All right. Uh, that's everything here. So let us go over. Oh, let's talk about itemization. So pair of a damage all champions items because he is pure support. Item for Noble Heart, item for Running with the Pack, and again, that all-important Lament the Lost. This is the big one. Uh, and then Ultimate Attack Damage, because remember, his cooldown is a function of the Moon Phases. Feet-wise, we could damage all champions. And then some and then an interesting one. Additively increase the base attack cooldown reduction that Desmond's Health the Moon provides by 0.2 seconds. Now remember, this goes out to other people. So this is another way of reducing uh, people's attack speed cooldown, if you want to throw that in. Uh, Devotion to Dark Times, Noble Heart, Running with the Pack, Lament the Lost. These are the big ones, again, if you're running those escorts. You want these in. All right. Uh, and some bigger versions, bigger versions of those as well. All right, let's talk about Solok. Let's talk about Solok. All right, Solok is a male Kalishtar ranger, neutral good, pure support. Solok arrives, there, there's no affiliation, but Solok arrived by Idol Champions Presents, the TTRPG live show that Codename Entertainment puts on uh, fairly regularly. Uh, yeah. Basic attack is range, that's what the arrow means. Knockback strike, Solok fires an arrow at the closest enemy, dealing damage and knocking it back a short distance. Talk about the ultimate, because it's because it's cool. And involves a dragon. Solok flies over the enemies on Tempest's back, while Tempest breathes lightning breath on the enemies below, dealing damage, stunning, and knocking them back. Yes, please. Look at that. Look at that. What a good boy. What a good boy. Tempest, such a good boy. All right. Passive. So whenever you see level zero, this means it's a passive ability always functioning. It's called Drake Warden. Solok's pet pseudo-dragon Levitz takes Solok's slot in the formation while Solok rides his Drake companion Tempest into battle. He attacks from Tempest. If Levitz is knocked out by enemies, Solok and Tempest retreat from the battlefield until you change areas. So this is letting you know how you move Solok around and that, yes... Levitz takes damage in his place, and that's what you have to watch for uh, to keep them alive. Right? 
First ability, Compatriot. Sola gains a reach stack for each champion with a ranged base attack in the formation. Each stack increases the damage of these champions by 400%, stacking multiplicatively. That's the good way. Okay, so Solok tells you right out the gate, I want to be in a ranged formation. I want to be in a, I want to, I want to be where the people are. No, I want to be in a ranged formation. I want to be where the people are shooting things with ranged weapons because that's going to, that's going to buff those ranged champions. Solok wants your DPS to be ranged. Okay. Maneuvers, the effect of compatriots. So we're just leaning into more buffing onto uh, that whole ranged system is increased by 25% each time an enemy is knocked back, stacking multiplicatively. That's the good way. Uh, to a max of 50 stacks, and this resets when changing areas. Okay. So knockbacks. Solak has a knockback on his attack, but. Range, but pairing up with range champions and people with knockbacks gives you even more power. Okay, so he is a very niche. He wants very specific things, but when you deliver, he delivers. Okay, critical mass. Solok increases the effect of the outgoing positional formation abilities of all champions with a ranged base attack by 25% for each reach stack he has, stacking additively. This does stack adequately. I feel like if this was multiplicatively, Solok and ranged uh, formations would be a lot more prevalent in the game. Uh, but again, this is positioning formation, uh, buffing positional formation abilities. That's anything that says like I buff adjacent or I buffed the column in front of me. Those are positionals. Um, so again, based off reach stacks. Blitzing Barrage. Each time a champion with a ranged base attack attacks, there's a 5% chance per stack of reach that their base attack cooldown is instantly reset. This, this is great. So lots of reach means a chance just to be just to be rapid fire. This, this is a potential chance for like a machine gun style formation. It'll never hit quite that good, but but it's good. But it can be good. So, again, which is great for chewing through segmented health. Uh, if you have the damage, choose through armored enemies fast. Yeah. All right, specializations. We have Unwavering, Emboldened, and Confidant. So, uh, Unwavering, Solok's base attack speed is reduced by two seconds. Additionally, the effect of maneuvers is increased to 30% per stack. So... Better stack values, and he's attacking more often, which means you're getting more of those knockbacks. So if you need to lean into them uh, being the one that's getting the knockbacks, unwavering. For Embolden, Solak's normal attack deals damage to all enemies in a small radius, and all enemies hit take an additional 400% damage for 5 seconds. This is also something that can help you build the knockbacks because it hits in an AOE. So if this is for like deeper in runs, when they're all grouping up on, on the tanks, you're going to get an AOE knockback that's going to stack up those stacks. Um, and it's going to debuff enemies for five seconds. So two different ways to apply, uh, to build up your maneuvers. This one gives you a bigger bonus per stack. But this one gives you a debuff and an AoE, so you're stacking potentially faster. You choose. Confidant to each formation slot occupied by an escort adds one reach stack for compatriots. Synergy with Desmond, folks. Synergy with Desmond. So you can build more reach stacks, even though uh, you may not be using... You're going to have take, slots taken up in your formation. You can't even put ranged people in there. You can still build up those reach stacks and get that multiplicatively stacking goodness. Good times, good times. I'm just going to go middle because we're not really doing anything special here. All right. Anything else? Sometimes they sneak in a late uh, ability. Nope, we're good. Okay. Item-wise, we get a pair of damage all champions items because he is pure support. We get a compatriot's item, a maneuver's item, and then ultimate attack and ultimate cooldown. Uh, Feet-wise, of course, damage of all champions. But then they added an interesting set of feats um, that have nothing to do with their kit, but everything to do with their dragon 
and feed off some of the stuff that you may have chosen. Like I just chose that AOE. Uh, these three feats add a percent chance to stun the enemy's Solok attacks for four seconds. So uh, this is 10%, this is 20%, this is 40%. Um, I'll be honest, I can't remember if it's additive or multiplicative. That's probably a question. It's got to be additive, right? We get to 70, it better be. It's a question for Dev Insights. Basically, you're adding a crowd control effect beyond the knockback. Knockback, stun. Knock them back, sit for four seconds. Then they're going to move again. So this can combine well with champions that, that like these effects that interact with these effects one prime example is lucius the more crowd control effects different crowd control effects are on the screen at once the more power lucius has um so interesting the set of feats it's kind of a, a it was a weird it was like wait what does this have to do but it's it's because it's a lightning dragon folks yeah he just charges his, his attacks up with some lightning uh, we got compatriots, we got maneuvers, uh, so other than that, like, these are the big, uh, kind of specialty feats, everything else, pretty straightforward, pretty straightforward for Solok. Alright, that brings us to Dynahair, brings us to Dynahair, the newest addition to the game. Uh, Dynahair's a female human wizard, lawful good, support and speed, they're a member of the Heroes of Baldur's Gate, which is the largest affiliation in the game now reaching a total of 10 champions you can build an entire formation now just out of here as a Baldur's gate i i i wouldn't uh but you can but you can I, they don't always they don't all necessarily work well together <laughs> but you can uh just for fun just for fun uh, they've always been the Heroes of Baldur's Gate has always been an affiliation that that is a mix and match. What do we call like a mix and match formation, where you you grab some people, you grab some of them, and you mix them with some other people um, because their stuff works better in some cases with others. Uh, but you totally can now. You can run a total Heroes of Baldur's Gate formation. I'm actually hoping that they add two more to the game so there can be one in every bench slot, even though you can't have them all in the formation. I just I I want to see an affiliation in the game that. That has twelve. That has twelve champions. One in every bench slot. Because just because, just because. Um, yeah, so we'll see what happens. Uh, now their base attack is ranged. I know they're a wizard, folks, but they went old school. It's an old school sling. Dinahair attacks the closest enemy with her trusty sling. Look, you got to save those spell slots. All right. Their ultimate is actually two different things. First up. Fireball, because of course, Dinahair casts a gigantic fireball that engulfs the entire enemy side of the screen, dealing one damage, uh, one ultimate hit to all enemies. So just pulsing damage once and knocking them back a short distance. And this is what it looks like. Hey, it's a fireball. Okay, that does hit everyone, despite it hitting in the middle. It, it hits the whole screen. Then their ultimate becomes lightning bolt. Dynair casts a lightning bolt through the target with the most health remaining, through them, dealing one ultimate hit to all creatures in a wide line and stunning them for five seconds. When you use that, it goes back to Firebolt. It alternates. She goes back and forth between Fireball, or excuse me, Fireball, not Firebolt, Fireball and Lightning Bolt. So depending on, you know, you can, you can alter it, you can time it, you can set it up, whatever you need. She's got a, kind of this multifunctional ultimate. Okay, here we go. The Resolve of Rashomon. Dynahair increases the damage of all champions in the formation with a con of 15 plus by 400% for each champion affected by this ability, stacking multiplicatively. That's the good way. Uh, yeah, con 15. It's a high bar, but con tends to be a stat that lots of champions have, so there's, there's a fair amount of champions in the game. That can qualify for this. So you can build this up pretty high. It is multiplicatively stacking. It does have item support. However, the item for the resolve of Rashomon is post stack, not pre stack. However, however, we're going to get to something in ability in a, in a bit that can, that, that another ability that can tweak this ability. And that ability 
has item support, and that ability alters the pre-stack of the Resolve of Rashomon, making this a mathematically overpowered ability. Like it's the oh, it's it is oh, it can be OP. It isn't directly. It's a sne- It's sneaky. It's sneaky. They're getting sneaky. They're seeing how much with dying hair. They're seeing how much you're paying attention. They're seeing how much you're paying attention. Uh, we now call mathematically OP abilities in my community mops. So this the dying hair mops. Dying hair mops. Uh, just does it in a very sneaky way. Uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. Enemy of Thay. Uh, these, these, these are the Red Wizards. The Red Wizards of Thay, folks. Humanoid enemies are Dynahair's favored foe. There's a 50% chance that an additional Red Wizard spawns with each wave in non-boss areas. So she creates, as we're seeing on the screen, she creates her own favored foes. Only on non-boss areas. This does create a problem if you're trying to deal... She doesn't have a buffing mechanic that's based off favored foes, but other champions do. You lose that on boss areas if if the only way you can get that is by this creation. So just be aware of that, okay? But but hers is going to feed into Spoils of War down here, which is her speed mechanic. All favored foes, not just hers, all favored foes have a 25% chance to drop double quest items or count for double quest progress. Okay? So she likes being with, for speed, she likes being with other champions that have a favored foe mechanic. Guess what the heroes of Baldur's Gate are mostly built around, folks? Favored foes. So uh, when she's with her squad, you go fast. She has item support for this, and that item support is going to buff the value of the percent chance. So just with the item support, you can get it up to guaranteed chance to drop um and you can go even higher so this is a human if you have human uh this is a human like uh buff uh that goes up with uh, based off favored foes um and and item support it has a high item cap uh we'll take a look at that item cap later i'm going to gear up dina here live on stream here in a, in a few moments i'm going to show you how to efficiently gear up uh, an event champion uh yeah but just know she is a speed champion with item support. That's those are the good. Those are the ones that have the real. That's that's nice. That's the getting the guarantees with the multiple numbers is great. That's what makes Human a fantastic speed champion. Um, this one's just based off favored foes. OK. Uh, now, defensive position. Dinah here increases the bonus of the Resolver Rashomon. Remember, that's the. That's the strong base ability. By 20% each time an ally is attacked, up to a maximum of 100 stacks. Stacks apply multiplicatively and reset when changing areas. Okay. If Minsk is in the formation, the base effect is increased to 44%. So, again, likes to be in formations with Minsk. The unapproachable east. This is the new hotness, folks. This is, this is an ability we've never seen before. Champions in the frontmost column of the formation have their overwhelm increased to 25 if it wasn't already higher. Overwhelm is a tanking stat. This champion becomes overwhelmed when they are being attacked by five or more enemies at once. An overwhelmed champion takes more damage from all enemies based on the number of enemies attacking them. That only that that increase only counts once you get over an overwhelm number. So, uh, Desmond normally overwhelm five. Desmond now overwhelm 25. Now Desmond doesn't have any health. But if we were somehow to give Desmond health, Desmond becomes tankier now. So in situations where uh, maybe you only have one tank available, but you've got a two champion front line, you can put a squishy up there. The health share from the tank will give them health. Dynahair gives them overwhelm. Your front line becomes more survivable. That does not make them a tank. It just makes them tankier, okay? Until until we get to the other key part of this, the specialization choice we're going to talk about first: loyal bodyguard. Dinahair teaches Minsk how to be a tank. So we're already giving. We're going to move. We're going to move some people around here. We're already giving overwhelm to the champion in the front. Dyna, Minsk now 25 overwhelm. Health 227 HP. Okay. 
With this specialization, Mince gains the tanking role and is eligible for this adventure. So, anywhere Dynahair goes, you can now bring Minsk, regardless of the restrictions. His base health, base base health, his base health increases by two hundred percent, and then further increases by seventy five percent for every fifty areas completed in the current adventure, up to area six hundred. So he'll stop getting boosts after area six hundred. All other champions' health is increased by 25% of Minsk's max health. So if we look at Minsk again, he's now he gets 25 from her other ability, Overwhelm. Uh, he is a DPS to support speed champion with 227 health. Loyal bodyguard. Minsk now has the tanking role, has 681 HP. So he now has tank health. Tank health. And as we go further in the adventure, he will get more and more health because of this specialization choice. Uh, we're, we're not going to we're not going to keep going here. Uh, I will. I want to shout out real quick, though. One of Dynahair's great feats that I think is just fantastic increases the effect of Dynahair's the Unapproachable East by 10. It is a gold chest feat, but that means we can make Minsk 35 overwhelm. But also there's a lot of other tanks in the game whose base overwhelm is 25, she can make them 35 without them needing to use their feet slots. And thus you can use like health or buffing feats to make them even more survivable instead of that uh, overwhelm feat. Great. Great stuff. Neat. Really neat. I'm interested to see what kind of interactions get, uh, you know, this might create, but... Only time will tell. All right, let me change uh, specs for Dina here again. Let's go talk about the rest of them. Come on, stop it, stop it, stop it. There we go. All right, we have Circle Magic and Iron Lord's Justice. Iron Lord's Justice, champions deal 1,000% more damage against all favored foes. So if you're if you're not necessarily built, if, if that's your thing, if you're running favored foes, you can just get a guaranteed 1,000% more damage against favored foes. Cool, right? Circle Magic is the is the other big one. So Loyal Bodyguard is just super neat. We've never had anybody that could change somebody's role like this. Um, so super neat, and who knows how it's going to get used, right? Uh, but places where you're not allowed to have tanks, now you can have a tank because Dynahair can bring Minsk in, and then and then you have a tank anywhere where you where maybe all the tanks got restricted any any kind of way they got restricted out. Now you with Dynahair can go in, you've got at least one tank, right? Circle Magic though is the is the power ability is the power spec. Champions that are adjacent to Dynahair get plus one con. Remember, she buffs based off the number of. 15, like con 15 plus. So this means you can get people, if people have feats, or if they're already at con 14, or if they have feats that get them to 14, but not 15, you place them adjacent to Dynahair, and now they qualify. So this increases the range of champions that are going to help you buff with Dynahair. Uh, and the base effect of the Resolve of Rashomon is increased by 10%. Now remember, Resolve of Rashomon is multiplicatively stacking. Raising the base value is the OP way to do things. That's raising the pre-stack modifier. Okay. Circle magic and all of the specializations are supported by an item, which means that increase is going to go up with your item levels, which means you're building the pre-stack modifier. And that's what makes, that's what makes Dynahair OP when you meet this 15 plus requirement. Okay. So this is the OP spec but only with item support only with item support uh i mean it's going to be op it's great if you just do it because again multiplicatively stacking but the more item levels you put into a, a mathematically op champion the more they deliver in terms of power this is what makes champions like artemis and Krond and jim and war kind of the top dps in the game it's because they're they're multiplicatively stacking and they have item support that buffs the pre-stack modifier they mop. They mop. Uh, all right. Uh, feats. Damage of all champions. Resolve of Rashomon. Spoils of War. Defensive position. Here's the specialization feats. You're going to want to use those if you're choosing that left spec as well. Again, here's that cool uh, up the up the overwhelm by 10 uh, beyond the 25 she gives, which is super neat. 
Um, and there's a charisma feat. Uh, this helps her qualify for Zerial, patron Zerial. Okay, so uh, I do want to point out Dynahair becomes uh, one of only two champions in the game that have a speed effect and also a mathematically overpowered ability, the other being Lazel. Dynahair, uh, the, with the item support, uh, means creating, like getting, raising all of your uh, item rarities, but then also investing lots of item levels becomes really efficient if if you're using her, you know, if you're going to be using her, if you're going to be building those kinds of formations. But she has incredibly efficient itemization in that regard. Uh, all right, that's all three of the champions. Let's talk about their achievements real quick. Uh, I thy nose is defeat 10,000 red wizard enemies with dying here in the formation. Now she spawns one, uh, every, you know, 50% of the time she spawns one with the waves. You can just farm it up long-term that way. Otherwise head over to tomb of annihilation, either the immortal warrior or a guardian of Oralunga. Both of those have either nine or 10 areas in them respectively that spawn red wizards. You can, you can either just cycle one of those runs or you can just go to an area and pop some speed potions and then just kill them and get this pretty straightforward. It's real. It's real straightforward. I did that in four minutes <laughs> on stream on Wednesday uh, with speed champions and speed potions. Uh, once I got to the area with the red wizards, it took me four minutes to hit 10,000. Uh, all right. Keep away is Solox. Uh, gain 2,500 cumulative stacks of Solox maneuvers ability. Maneuvers is the one built on knockback. So he can do it on his own, or you can pair him up with other champions that have a ranged knockback like Desmond um, and, and build this uh, quickly. Again, speed potions are going to help you there, right? Uh, and then Desmond's is in the mood to be quite rude. Use Desmond's ultimate twice in 30 seconds while he's adjacent to six champions. This is, you can do this in, in a lot of formations. I, I can't remember. Can we do it in, De we can do it in Desmond's, right? They better be able to do it in Desmond's. Yes. You would put him right here in the middle if you're doing one of his runs. Otherwise, Sword Coast is a great place to do it. Uh, and again, just wait until the moon is almost full. Hit the ultimate. The moon gets full. You get your ultimate back. You do it again. Achievement unlocked. Okay. All right, let's talk about gearing up your champions. I'm going to demonstrate here with Dinah here because we want to learn how to gear up uh, champions efficiently so you are you get them into uh, a usable state as quickly as possible. Usable state in this game is full blues or better. Obviously, the ultimate goal is is full purples, epic gear, uh, right? But, but coming out straight out the gate, full blues or better is what you're trying. Is what you're trying to achieve. There is no efficient way to get to, to full purple. It's RNG. Uh, there's no guarantees to get purples except for pity timers. Uh, there's pity timers on gold chests that are one in 10. If you have horrible luck at getting an ep uh, getting a piece of epic gear, your 10th chest opening will guarantee you one. Okay. Uh, the first time you open a chest, the pity timer is four. After that, it's 10. But there are guarantees for getting blue uh, and getting upgrades from chests. And so we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to explain to you the most efficient way to get to blue. Uh, and that's going to utilize, uh, the Electrum chests, like the ones that you got from this stream. Somebody put, yes, here we go. Rip events 1.0 1 is what that code is. Now, if I hold down the control button and I click on the chest, okay, here, normally this is how slow it opens, right? And how slow it closes. If I hold down the control button and click just, just once the first time I do this, boom, super fast. And now every time I click super fast, for those of you who want to open up lots of stuff, just know that's the super fast way to do it. But you put your code in, you get Electrum chests from streams like this. And then when you open these Electrum chests, uh, their rule is a very soft rule. They will give you an, they will upgrade something if they drop an upgrade, but they don't force an upgrade. There's no guarantees. Okay. The only guarantee that they offer is if a champion has no gear, they will drop gear for them first, but that's no gear, no gear at all. Well, guess what our new, new champions have? A Dynahair has no gear at all. So my first six chests maybe are basically guaranteed, at least six chests are basically guaranteed to drop gear for Dynahair. After that, it starts spreading out because Electrum chests will drop gear for every champion you own. But 
Again, when they have no gear, it basically creates a funnel and that item spins around and goes straight onto that champion. So this is, it's going straight to Dine here. Boom. Dine here. And it was a blue. That's a shock. Blue is rare. It is hard to get. It's rare, but it's hard to get out of these. You can with a large numbers, but I got real lucky. So Electrum Chest can get you a white, green, and blue gear. And what we're looking for here, <laughs> if it didn't ruin it, is we're just trying to get to green gear or better with uh, Electrums if we can. See, there's a white. Uh, again, the first six are going to, well, there's a green. So that's what, you know, we're trying to get to at least green, right? Uh, there's green. What is that? Four. Uh, five. Six. Uh, and we got upgrades. See, that's what happens. As I said at least six because we got some whites and then we got some upgrades to greens. Did that do it? That did it. There's all six items right there, folks. So now I have all six items for Dyna here. One of them is still a white, though, so I still want to keep opening Electrums. Uh, and if I don't have enough Electrums, then I would open named Silvers, so Silver Dyna hair chests, because Silver named chests drop the same kinds of gear with the same rules. The difference in that is if it's named for the champion, it's only going to drop for that champion. Some people are like, well, then why wouldn't you use that first? And that's because we already know where it's going. It's guaranteed to go to Dyna here. So it's more efficient for us to pop the Electrums that could go anywhere, but we know we'll go to Dynahair right now than it is to drop the name Silvers. We want to use those named Silvers for duplicates and to get anything up to green that we weren't able to. Um, there's also the chance to get to full blue, but I'm not worried about that. Okay, so if I come back over here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fish for uh, that green upgrade. Was that it? Fireball components? It is. So now I am all green. Yay. And I did it just with Electrums, but I could have done it with a mix if I didn't have a lot of Electrums. Again, if, if all three of these champions are new, those Electrums would be spread out between all three of them, and you might run out if you didn't save them any up, uh, which is fine. Then we would switch to Silvers, and then we could get, once we get to all green, we can either keep, uh, pop. We you could pop all the rest of your Silvers if you'd like. If you're out, now is now, with all green or better gear, now is when you can open your gold Dyna hair chests. Because golds have a rule as well. Theirs is that they'll always give you an upgrade, but only to green or blue. To green or blue. Well, we don't want to waste a gold chest upgrade on a green. That's why we use Electrums and, and name Silvers first on event champions. But now... Now I know every gold chest I open is going to give me a blue or better piece of gear. This is the most efficient way to get to blue. So now I only need five chests to get full blue and have her now be in a good power curve and usable. And everything else beyond this is hunting for the RNG for epics and also getting duplicate item levels to make her more powerful. So I know this gold chest, where, where are hers? What is, is this hers? This is hers. Okay. This gold Dyna hair chest is going to guarantee me a blue or better piece of gear. And there we go. I got a duplicate green. That's fine. It can give you two pieces of gear, but it's only guaranteeing one of them will be an upgrade. This is going to give me all of my blues. Oh, there's two. There we go. That was super lucky. There were actually three items and two were blue upgrades. So now... <laughs> That was even easier. Um, I'm going to open two more chests uh, to get the last. One of these, though, if we look, my pity timer is now one and two. I'm going to get a piece of purple gear either in this chest or the next one. Didn't happen in this one, but there's another one of these blues. And then this next chest, guaranteed epic, because my pity timer is now uh, set is now set to guarantee me an epic in the next chest. And there's my epic. Oh, and it's the specializations one. That's that's nice. Uh, now, I still have a green that I'm missing because it, you know, the epic will go anywhere. It didn't have to go over to that green one. So I'll open up one more gold chest, and now I'm going to be at full blue. But, okay, so now I'm at full blue, and I have one purple. That's basically, as long as you open up a chest in this way, you're guaranteed to get five blue and one purple in an event. Guaranteed. Any purples beyond that, uh, based off the number of chests you have. Can you run a pity timer again, or do you or do you get lucky? 
you know. Uh, so uh, now we're going to, I'm just going to dump all my electrums. Normally I do this first and then I get a super, a full blue uh, new champion. And then I have a ton of, you'll see I have tons of chests. And I'm like, how the heck did that happen? Bounty contracts. Again, I told you, bounty contracts get you lots of event tokens, and then those event tokens you run free plays with in Events 1.0 to get lots of chests, and that gets me lots of duplicate gear, which gets me lots of item levels. This number of gold chests is going to get me full epic for sure. 54 is the guaranteed number, uh, but usually you can hit full epic in somewhere in the 30s uh, in this system. So now I have a full epic Dyna here. Uh, and let's look at our item levels, item or itemization. So we're going to damage all champions items. We get resolve of Rashomon, but remember this is post stack. This is a post stack mul multiplier on this ability. Spoils of war. This is the speed item. This is the speed item. So you do want to up this. Now this is what I've got 161% right now. Um, that's got her speed ability up to what? 65.4% chance. I'm still not at hundred percent chance. Uh, that item keeps it 3501 without any gilding. That's that's a lot. That's a lot. Uh, that's up there with uh, with Virgil for high item cap levels. Uh, defensive position is is the other buff. Uh, then specializations. Remember, this is the item that applies the pre stack for Resolve of Rashomon when you're in the left spec. So upping this has now boosted our Resolve of Rashomon base value to 511% for each stack. Much stronger now. Much stronger now. Uh, and then you get ultimate attack cooldown. Again, feats, where it's supporting all the normal stuff, damage of all champions, resolve a rash and spoils of war is the speed feat, so if you want to go faster, you put this in. Defensive position, and then specializations is the OP one. If you go on that left spec, uh, you want to buff the specializations, that's going to affect uh, the power coming off of this and the multiplicative stacking. Then you get that neat little uh, add ten to the front row as long as they're as long as they're not above uh, the thirty five that would have been there anyway, uh, and that charisma that we talked about. All right, folks, we're gonna take a short break uh, while I rest my voice and we listen to some music from a past Fleet's Wake champion. This is the song for the Black Viper. This is a Viper's Fang. I'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you. 
my family's name so all I wanna do Vipers facts Oh, muted. Well, we have we got we got captions for that. Uh, TLDR: You can't put tanking pigments on Minsk, uh, even when he has the tanking role. Uh, also, uh, while currently loyal bodyguard doesn't scale with the item for specializations, it's supposed to. That has been pointed out, and Justin has stated it is supposed to. So uh, he will get tankier as you invest more in in that. Uh, in Dinahair's item levels, if you want Minsk tank, okay? Um, what else? Oh, hey, I said we were going to talk about the boss. The boss of the Unfair Sea is the Adolescent Kraken. He's just a baby. Now, the big deal here, it is a segmented health boss, so you can even click on it and remove a segment, as I just did. But the big deal is this is a vampiric tentacle. It's a little hard to see. Um, you need to kill the tentacles, folks. That's really the, the big thing. You need to kill the tentacles because that vampiric tentacle, whenever it hits somebody, it heals back. Watch. It's going to hit and it's going to get this segment back. Boom. You got to take it out. What's one of the best ways to take it out? Fire breath potions. You don't need a lot. You just need a tiny little one. Uh, and then it's gone. And it's gone. And even in a formation with only three people, it's gone. It, it, later on, obviously, you need a full formation. It's going to have solid health. But the uh, Kraken itself uh, is super easy to kill because it's just a segmented health enemy. It's You just need one damage off every attack to remove to remove health like this. It's just the, tend the vampiric tentacle that you got to worry about because that brings the health back. So as long as you can keep it uh, negated, uh, you're fine. And just click on it when it pops up with a fire breath potion. And that also gets all the trash mobs uh, so that all of your attacks are going straight at the Kraken. Straight at the Kraken. All right. Let's dive into the questions. Let me uh, do some things. Uh, we'll, we'll, hit the, we'll hit the on topic stuff first. Regis 2K, would you recommend shining Dine Here slot 3, 4? And would you recommend shining Carlock slot 5? Well, Carlock wasn't on our topic, but we'll get there. Um, so, Dine Here. Slot three is speed, so gilding, sure. Slot four, no, 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 slot five. Slot five. Slot five is the one that makes uh, Resolve of Rashomon mathematically OP. So slot five is the one you want to guild. Is the one you want to guild. Four is, is fine. I mean, look, it's nice, but it stacks. But the bonus uh, for this, item support for this is post-stack, is, is my understanding. If I remember correctly, let me throw a... Uh, we're in defensive position. This is how you can tell. Uh, oh, I don't have any stacks. But if I recall in my testing, it's post stack. So you don't necessarily want to guild four, but you want to guild. You could guild three and five. Those are solid targets. Carlock is bay, and we're done with that conversation. No, uh, Carlock, uh, you want to do? Uh, I gilded the health item. I gilded the health item because her weakness is her health. Uh, I don't know about guild. Nothing else is pre-stack. Yeah. So the rest is like if you want, but it's not necessarily a major target. She doesn't have a Ceramorphosis item, which would have been the thing, but that's because her Ceramorphosis, 
Uh, it applies to health share. Uh, so just guild doing the health is, was my target. So, yeah. Uh, all right. Do, 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 do. This is somewhat related to today's topics. Rough Rider, uh, is the wording in the patch notes regarding Electrum Chests incorrect? It says it will try to fill missing equipment in the slot where the duplicate item is picked. I mean, that sounds correct. Electrum Chests would award duplicate equipment. It will instead, if possible, fill a missing rarity in that slot to help with collection completion. Well, that's, that's ex exactly what it's supposed to do now. So if I had Dyna hair, my Dyna hair is going to be full now. Uh, I should have maybe demonstrated this earlier. Uh, if I had Dinah here with a gap in her collection, if she was missing the first attempt here, this white, if I opened an Electrum and it was going to drop for Dinah here, uh, it would drop a white, and I was already all geared everywhere here. Uh, instead of duping one of my other things, or even giving me a higher rarity dupe here, it would drop this white so that I can fill my comp my collection in. That's what that change means. That's what that change means. Uh, so no, Electrum Chests just got better. Electrum Chests just got better. They're still what you want to gear up early on, but they're also going to help you fill in your collection if that's your thing. That real big guy, I'm having trouble with Desmond's In the Mood to be Rude achievement. Trigger his ultimate two times in 30 seconds. Any suggestions on a beginner's group to assist triggering this? Yeah, just wait until he's almost at the full moon. Hit his ultimate. Uh, oh, I did it backwards. I, we were going towards new mode. Dang it. Uh, but wait until, like, as it's filling up, I was I thought we were going this way, and we're going this way. As it's three quarters moon, three quarters white, uh, and just a sliver of gray on the left side, hit the ultimate, because he's about to go back into that phase. He's about to go back into the new moon, and then you just hit it again. It's also a lot easier if you are using that left spec. Uh, Lurking Rider with Dynahair having a spec that can make Minsk into a tank. Does this mean Boo is now a tank commander? I mean, pretty much. Yeah. We all know Boo is the actual champion. Uh, Minsk is just a mount. Uh, Headhunter Amra has a question about events 2.0. I'm going to hold on to that for a second. Uh, Art Demissive, you asked, does Whittle override that? And I don't know what the heck that means. So can you give me some... Uh, context. Remember, you may ask this question while I'm talking, but I don't answer it while I'm talking, so I don't know what that was in relation to. So if you can add some context, uh, Gabe can grab that and let me know. And then I will come back to that. Governor Explosion, do characters cycle back in from previous events if you miss them? Not in Events 1.0. Someone asked me some events 2.0 questions, and then we'll like, go get to it then. <laughs> D2 Casty, a D2 Crafty one. Does ranged include caster range? No, it's ranged. It has to have a, an arrow symbol. So it has to look like this. It has to have the arrow head, okay? A caster is going to have a, uh, a little match. Who's got a caster? There we go. It's a little magic missile symbol. That's not ranged. That's magic, Okay. That's not ranged, that's magic, and this is melee. So it has to have that ranged emblem to be a ranged attack. Uh, Decaeusine, uh, how do Dynahair and Cridal work together? Ooh, this is a good combination. They are in the same uh, uh, affiliation. So Cridal is a dodge tank. Cridal is the only dodge tank in the game. And what that means is Cridal does not have health unless you choose to give them some, but I never do. <laughs> I never do. Uh, so Cridal uh, is a dodge tank, and basically he works off of evasion. So uh, he begins every area with stacks of evasion equal to his overwhelm. He starts off at 25 overwhelm. When Cridal gets attacked, as long as he has at least one stack of evasion left, he dodges the attack completely and uses up one stack of evasion. So he consumes a stack of evasion to dodge an attack. Cradle restores two stacks of evasion every second for each healing champion in the formation. Cradle, legitimately the only tank in the game that makes healers worthwhile. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so as long as he's healing, as long as he's got healers in the formation, they don't even have to be healing him. 
They just have to be existing in the formation. He heals his overwhelm. He heals his evasion stacks. Uh, the number of stacks cannot surpass his overwhelm. So if you can raise his overwhelm, great. If a boss or enemies are enraged, max stacks are divided by the enrage multiplier rounded down. So when you hit enrage mode, Cridal turns into paper, uh, ultimately. Now, Cridal can... Uh, oh, here. Cridal's overwhelm is 15, excuse me. Uh, I added a feat to get it to 25. Now, uh, if I put him up here, though, he goes straight to 25. It somehow went up to 35. Oh, if, do I have her feet involved? No. Has he got another thing? Hold on. It's been a while since I've watched how he... Oh, Crow gains 5 overwhelm for each Heroes of Baldur's Gate champion in the formation. Yay! So that's giving him some more overwhelm. Uh, let's look at his base numbers, because now I'm now I'm explaining him, and I don't want to explain it right. So, right off the bat, he had 5 overwhelm. He gets 10 for uh, because he's a Baldur's Gate champion. Okay. Uh, and then he's going to get more from stuff, right? So if we add Dinahar in, suddenly... Uh, just because she exists in the formation. He's now at 35 Overwhelm. All right. Now, if I add this 10, now I'm going to see. I haven't actually done this. If I add this, he goes to 45. Nice. Nice. We could take him to 50, probably. Yeah, we could get him to 50. Sure. I don't want to. Uh, but you can get him to 45 from this, or... Or we can remove this, and we can add the 10. Oh, I don't have this yet. I don't have that 10 yet. All right, well, if I add that 10, that would add 10 more to, to Overwhelm here. Just gives him a bigger max, right? And then you still need some healers in. You still need some healers in. Um, so that he can, you know, do his actual thing. Uh, but that's how they're going to interact. He's going to actually help him boost up his, uh, his stuff quite a bit. Quite a bit. We need, to, we need to kill some things here. So we can keep going. I'll give him some click damage. All right. So, yeah. Solid interaction with the way uh, Cradle works, ultimately. Uh, like, when will Justin relent and let us put tanking pigments on Boo? I don't know if they will. I think it's I think it's totally fine. I think it's a fair trade-off. You realize you're only getting it when he's a tank. Why not? Uh, anything else uh, specifically about this event? No. Okay. So let's go into regular stuff. Again, I'll probably hit one of them. I'm going to hit one of these up again. I'm just going to feed this one back in the queue. Because, because it has a different answer for events 2.0. All right. Uh, remember, this is the final event 1.0. So stuff's changing about events. If you want to know more about events 2.0, ask. I'll tell you. Uh, Regis 2K, did they patch Havilar's slow stacking? Yes. That was the other thing here. Fixed a bug where Havilar's imps could unintentionally apply their slow debuff more than once per enemy. <sighs> I've already seen people go, well, Zaka farming's dead. No, no, it's not. You sweet, sweet summer children. Uh, Zaka farming was created long before Havilar was ever in the game. Havilar just made it easy mode. She just made it easy mode. Uh, yeah. Just made it easy mode. So you can still do, you can still do Azaka farming. You just have to do it the way we used to do it. You have a champion in there, at least one champion with a knockback to bounce that enemy and keep it away from you. That's how we had to do it. You had to sacrifice one member of your formation for gold find. You don't have to sacrifice anymore though, because Eggbert exists and Eggbert has a knockback. So try that out. Try that out. Um, also, uh, if you're doing it on non-boss enemies, like I do, I don't, I don't do that boss thing. People like the bosses for a little extra gold. I like to just make it easy on myself. Uh, you can use Vi. Vi creates crystal spheres. So you put Vi in when you're first building up your wave. She drops one crystal sphere, then you can swap her out. You do a knockback, it pushes the, the crystal sphere out of the range of any of your attacks, and then you can build up your pilfer stacks and destroy stuff, and they'll all transfer to the crystal sphere, and then you don't have to worry about a knockback champion. Then you don't have to worry about it. Okay? So there's there's plenty of ways that you can get around the fact that, that Havilar, uh, Havilar's ultimate slow got nerfed, effectively. They say fixed, but... 
Um, yeah, there's another follow up here. Uh, someone's like, do you reckon that's a final change? Prince Valium asked for the Havilar thing. Um, I don't know. Depends on community. I mean, I, th I think here's the thing. I brought this up a very long time ago with, uh, uh, the devs, one of the devs, uh, and they thought, yeah, that's probably, it probably shouldn't stack infinitely because it was creating a problem in that it stacked infinitely. Uh, and that infinite stacking combined with Lucius to create infinite ramping damage. And that's a problem. That's a, that's a big problem. Um, it's taken them a while to figure out the, to decide how they want to change this apparently. And I guess with all the conversations, they're like, well, T5 cats. No, it's not. We just had this conversation. This is not the end of Azaka farming. It was never around when Azaka farming started. It's Azaka farming is going to be just fine. Um, so here's the thing. Yeah, no longer stay. They chose to make it uh, just apply once. Like, I guess they had uh, desired it to. Um, so, I, you know, one of the things that had got thrown around was, well, let's just give it a cap. But apparently they've waited. I was waiting for them to introduce a cap. And apparently they just decided ultimately, no, we're just going to make it what, we're, what it's supposed to be. So, yeah, no, in, no more infinite stacking slows on Havilar. But it's fine. Again, we never had that when Azaka farming began. Uh, so it was never a necessary thing. It just made it easy mode. Just made it easy mode. Okay. Um, I didn't get an up. I haven't seen an update from Art Demissive, so I don't know what that question was. Maybe they'll come back and let me know. Headhunterama, what's the change from event 1.0 cost to event 2.0 in terms of spending currency, is it better in 2.0 or the same? So let's talk about events 2.0. Uh, I'm also going to address Governor Explosion's question. Do characters cycle back in from previous events if you miss them? Not in Fleet's Wake, but starting March 6th, yes. So here's how events 2.0 is going to work. They're, they're still delivering champions. They're still delivering gear. They're changing the way they do it, and it's making it better overall for everyone. So in Events 2.0, there will be two featured champions. Events will only happen once a month. Once a month. They, they will last for three weeks. Three weeks, but they will only happen once a month. They will always start on the first Wednesday of a month, so you'll always know when the event is starting, even if that's the first day of the month. Okay. And they'll last for three weeks. Now you will still accrue tokens, event tokens, uh, once every 25 seconds and from bounty contracts, if you consume them. Uh, but no longer will you have to spend currency to do anything. You don't have to spend it to do your unlock run. You don't have to spend it to do a free play. You don't have to spend it to do variants. Those are all free now. In free plays, you no longer have to grind free plays to get random gear. Okay, so no longer cycling infinite for some of us multiple days of free plays to get your gear. You are just going to take your tokens to the shop and buy a chest pack for tokens that chest pack right now the chests are the not how you want to buy gear ever because if you come over here you'll see a gold dino hair chest cost ten thousand event tokens no for one gold chest no because you could run four in the current system you could run four free plays for ten thousand tokens and be guaranteed to get one but maybe get up to four right like there's there's a lot of rng involved but you're at least guaranteed one with three silvers now the 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 drop rate was supposed to be one in three so in the new system you'll come over here and you'll buy a chest pack that's going to have one gold and two silvers which is the exact drop rate one in three and it's going to cost 7500 tokens which is what three maxed out maxed out free plays would have gotten you okay so there is a little loss. I will tell you this right away. There is a little loss of tokens because you no longer get those discounted free plays. 500, 1,000, 1,500, or 2,000 before you get to 2,500. But there's no RNG anymore. You get what you pay for now. 7,500 tokens gets you one gold chest and two silvers. Every time. 
Okay. And because you no longer, for, for established players, and ultimately for everyone, because you no longer have to spend all your time grinding out those free plays, you're freeing up a ton of time that you could use to, like, I don't know, gem farm? And get yourself more bounty contracts and get yourself more chests than you ever did before? Like, the time efficiency has gone way up in Events 2.0. Uh, so, Events 2.0, I get two focus champions. The vast majority of the time, one of those champions, you're saying two and you're pointing three with your fingers. I don't know, whatever. Uh, I, no. So we're talking about three chests. One gold chest, two silver chests. That's three chests. I, I'm guessing that's what you're talking about, Nathalus. You have no context there. I don't know what, I don't know what we're talking about. Uh, so here's the thing. Uh, two, two champions, two focus champions each event. But the vast majority of the time, one of them will be a brand new champion, just like we see now. The other champion will be a fully a, a, a major rework on a champion that needed it. Major rework. So two champions that are featured in the event. Okay. Um, that reworked champion may or may not have been in from that event before. I don't know that it matters. Probably will be, but two. Okay. Then they will offer you three flex slots. Now, flex slots are the new hotness. Okay. So you'll unlock, you'll have the chance to unlock two champions, one new one and one reworked, or just get a rework if you already had them, right? Then there's going to be three flex slots. Now, week one of the event, you'll have access to the two featured champions and one flex slot. Week two of the event, the add the second flex slot is going to open week three of the event. The third flex slot is going to open. You will be able to unlock up to five champions. Every event, those flex slots, uh, will be filled with flex champions, which are any champion that came in this event prior, along with potential champions that got moved into this event from adjacent events or somewhere else. Because now instead of 17 events in a year, there's only going to be 12. So they're going to get rid of five events and those champions are going to have to spread out amongst the other, the other event pools. So something like, uh, like right now we're in year seven. So new champion would be seven, would be the seventh champion. Then there'd be six old champions. And then there's going to be a couple from the others. So like eight, nine, 10 champions total available from, uh, that you can select from, you'll get two guaranteed. Then the other three, your choice based off who you want to pick, who your priorities are. Now, could it be that sometimes there's more than three champions that you'd like? Yeah, probably. But but you have more flexibility and more uh, capability to gear up, to unlock and gear up champions than you ever had in an event before that was just always the, the most recent two. Now you can unlock anything from the history of that event and, and related champions. So super neat. Look forward to seeing it. Uh, what else has happened in event 2.0? Uh, there's going to be a blog that's not going to, that's going to drop next Friday. That'll have a lot more information. Um, uh, but those are the primary features. Those are the primary features. Yeah. All right. Uh, see our toast. Uh, do you have a tutorial on pigments? No, because they're pretty straightforward. Pigments are a consumable. Uh, tied. There's only four different types. We've only seen three so far. Support, DPS, and tanking. You apply them to a champion that has that role. That's the only people that can have them. And they buff based off what it is. So support is 200% damage all champions. DPS is that champion gets 400% damage. And tanking is that champion gets its max health boosted by 100%. So, yeah. They're pretty, they're pretty straightforward that way. Karoi Vergara, is there a way to fulfill previous achievements from current events? Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, to do, uh, you can do a champion's achievements at any point in time. So as long as you own that champion, you can get their achievements done. Uh, the ones that's like all three variants has to be done in a, in a time gate if they're not in an active event. Uh, the only ones that have to be done in events currently are these numerical ones because you have to do this in a current event free play. But that means if this event is live, you can do all of these in anybody's free play. 
Uh, but the others require you owning the champion, and they can be done at any time. Or in a time gate. Uh, undone. Can you explain Dob farming? Lurking Rider? Is that a thing? Lurking Rider is my ox, my, uh, is the, this is the resident, not even mine, is the resident Ox Ventures Guild expert. Lurking Rider, is Dob farming a thing or are we just talking about building up their, uh, their offshore accounting? Because I've never heard of something specifically called Dob farming. So here's the thing. Dob is a champion over here in slot 12. Uh, I swear. No, 11. No, 10. Where the hell is Dob? No, Dob is 12. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm getting smacked by the Kraken over here. Okay, uh, none of this matters for what I'm about to talk about. All right, so here we go. That pod won't fill itself. Dob has a feature called Offshore Accounting. Uh, at the transition to each new area, there's a 25% chance that Dob sets the champion's gold amount, that's this number up here, to zero and gains deposit stacks equal to the exponent of the lost gold. The exponent is the E value. This is one of the reasons we use scientific notation. So if he were to dump this right now, we'd get 77 deposit stacks. Dob increases both the damage of their buff, their damage buff, and the gold find bonus of their gold find buff by 10% for each deposit stack. Stacking additively. The number of deposit stacks is capped to 25 times the highest area complete in the current adventure. So basically, you put Dob in, he takes your money, he throws it in a lake, literally, and then buffs both your damage and your gold find with it. So Dob farming is just use Dob, in my opinion. Just, just use Dob. Make sure you're keeping him capped at his stacks, which he does on his own fairly well. I don't, I don't even think there's... I think there might be a feat. Yeah, I don't use this. If I'm using him the whole time, he, say, he stays capped. This is like if you're going to try to cap him later. It, update, it, it gives him to like 50% chance. Um, but yeah, and then he, you know, he buffs Goldfine based on being uh, adjacent to lots of champions. So it's just using Dob and making sure he's in your whole run so that he keeps your stacks capped and he gives you those big bonuses. To me, that's all Dob farming is. Um, and then if you want to use him in an Azaka farm, go for it. Uh, Skavo, speaking of, for Azaka farming, is there a way to have Kroll get to 20, 30, or 40 stacks when we don't use him in our pushing formation? Um, he has to be in, he has to be in on the boss area. He doesn't have to be in pushing up to that boss area, but on the boss area that you're stopping on to uh to clear down to one enemy he has to be in for that clear because what needs to happen is the best way to do it obviously you need both the virulent strain feats you have him in you you move to that level you pull you pull your dps out you move to that boss level the the enemies the 10 mobs in the boss move in and they start building up pilfer stacks and then you just tank until they all get uh 10 pilfer stacks Sometimes you need a knockback to bounce them so you can see that he's, you're getting an all 10 or you just learn to get a feel for it, which I have after years of what feel like decades of use. But um, And then you put your DPS in and then they blow everybody up and you end up with one enemy that has hopefully 40 pilfer stacks. That's how you that's how you build up your crawl stacks. I have that in, in my Azaka farming tutorials, which... The base functionality still applies, even though the champions change, and even though now Havilar has changed. I think there should be explanations of how I usually optimize uh, crawl stacks. But he doesn't have to be in on your push, but he does have to be in on the clear for that level. Otherwise, the most you'll ever get is 10. And then he's pointless to have in. 10 stacks isn't worth anything. you got to get the multiplicative. you got to get to 20 or higher, and 40 is the best. Shalom, and I want to know about Events 2.0, but don't know what to ask. Pick something to tell us about it. Uh, no, I can't spoil anything. Uh, again, there's a there's a blog I already talked a lot about. It. There's a blog coming next Friday. That's the uh, that's the one. Uh, that's the first March first. Uh, and then there's a chance. There's two champion spotlights coming. One will be on March fourth, Monday, and one will be Tuesday, March fifth. Because again, two featured champions. So find out more information then. Regis 2K, which slot is Lazel's best to shiny? Is it slot two? It's the Ceramorphosis. Three. Three. 
seromorphosis on all the absolute adversaries is there is there multiplicatively is their mop it's their mathematically overpowered ability and it has item support so uh demon Gur, what will happen to celestian's blessing season veterans and i'm just going to expand to this what will happen to all the things that buff season stuff well for the moment they're not going to do anything because seasons are going on pause after this season, which ends in four days, one hour and 14 minutes. Um, seasons will go on pause. If they, if they decide to change those blessings, that's probably a good sign that they don't plan on bringing seasons back, but also uh, like Strongheart has a season buff. So we just kind of have to wait to see what they, what they decide to do with, with the, with seasons. Cause if they do bring them back, those still are going to be functional stuff but you know, we'll see we just have to wait have to wait and see blue moon you mentioned that the other mops in the game that doubled his oh that the other mop in the game that doubles the speed champion was lazel correct which of her abilities qualifies her for mop status ceramorphosis every single absolute adversaries has a ceramorphosis ability and every single one of them stacks multiplicatively and all except except carlock have item support that applies to the pre-stack mod modifier. So all of them are mathematically overpowered. That's why them as a group is super strong. Now remember, that means you do have to put lots of item levels into a champion. When I say lots of item levels, I don't mean a couple hundred. Usually you really see mops come, like these mop abilities come online when they have a thousand or more item levels. So this is, this is more late game building, investing heavily in your teams. Um, right out the gate, they'll be strong because they're, they're still a mathematically overpowered ability. It's still going to be strong. It's multiplicatively stacking, but uh, it doesn't go uh, outrageous until, until you get a lot of item investment. Shevik, how happy does it make you that the next free time gate is over a month away? Uh, I mean, look, I, you know, I, I'm just happy that we're getting a, another way to unlock. We're getting more champions unlockable, uh, and you're you're being able to choose them kind of like time gates from events. Um, and then I'm going to be more excited when they upgrade time gates uh, to work more with this new system. A <laughs> thousand is the new 100. So here's the thing, head on Arama. The first 100 item levels you put in a champion is the strongest item levels you can put in in all champions. Just because of the way diminishing returns works in the item system. But four champions with mathematically overpowered abilities, so multiplicatively stacking with the pre stack modifier from an item support, they kick off, like they will keep uh, boosting infinitely. Uh, but you'll start, but again, I, th I feel like it really feel it when you're at around a thousand. Could it, could you put in, you know, like 500? Sure. But, but like for me, Artemis never really, I used to have like 700 item levels in my Artemis and people were like, you should use Artemis formation for this. It would, it would destroy. And I build an Artemis formation just like they told me to. And it was garbage because all my other champions had a couple hundred item levels on their stuff and they scale better early with item levels than Artemis does. Artemis really doesn't scale until he has like a, for me, again, all of my testing, until I got to a thousand, he didn't become powerful. He was a mid-tier DPS. He needs a lot of item levels, and he needs lots of item levels on all his supports. Um, so, you know, a thousand seems to be a sweet spot uh, for those specific type of items. Toy for Run uh, 85. What are your thoughts on the new collection guide blog? Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> Glad somebody asked about this. All right, uh, man, we're gonna we're gonna have to lightning round this because we're running out of time. But oh, it's so good. Here's the blog post, folks. So you can check it out on your own. Collections guy uh, and the collections rework arrives Wednesday, folks. Wednesday the twenty eighth. One, two, three, four days from now. Four days from now. So not even that many sleeps. And the new collection reworks arrived. Uh, there's pictures in the, there's, you know, they're still like, still in progress, but they look really good. Uh, so the new collection system is basically everything we ever wanted. It looks that way for me. Uh, on ways to track like all the things in idle champions with nice little bars that tell you how, what, how, how what percent are you complete with stuff? Um, it's going to track all kinds of things for you. But one of the great things and the thing that I like the most uh, is that it provides guide quests. So guide quests uh, 
are these new kind of progression based quests and also directive quests, right? And it's guide quests. So they, they call them guide and collection. So collection, the collection quests are more just like progression based. You're, as you complete all these things, uh, you're getting lots of rewards and the guides are kind of pointing you like, give you an idea of hopefully where to go next. We don't know. We'll find out Wednesday on how well, it, how good a job they do that related. Uh, I'm going to be starting a new player account, a fresh new player account next week, playing it on Wednesday when this drops. And that's all I'm going to be doing on my channel from for the foreseeable future is playing idle champions on that new player account to just to play through the game from a fresh perspective with these new quests in to see how well they work and to see what the game is like for new players. Um, so join me, uh, twitch TV slash car where you can click my name and follow me over there. If you want to, if you want to see that adventure. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm super looking for this. They say there's over 300 guide and collection quests currently, and that number is just going to go up, uh, as they add more content to the game. Um, so yeah, and there's rewards for it. And a, the major reward looks to be corrupted gems and corrupted gems are, uh, what you use in the Thane Enclave. So to buy all of these limited time things. So earning lots of these to buy more of this stuff is cool. And that's also where you get support pigments. That's the primary place to get support pigments. So really neat. Looking forward to it. Uh, head on around, but do we know how many champions are in each pool? Like I said, it, I don't know. It's going to depend on how many, like there's, there's automatically, this is year seven. So that means there would have been seven. Uh, there would have been a new champion plus six old champions in that event, but there's five events that no longer exist. So they have to spread those 30 plus champions around to other places amongst 12 so maybe three more going in it so maybe nine nine uh, this year flex champions uh if one is the if one from that event is the reworked then eight flex champions i don't know but it's just the number's just going to get bigger every year number's just going to get bigger any of every year uh, but again, you'll be able to pick three out of that group. Uh, and then you can always use the, you can always use time gates, to get the rest. Uh, Textati T, should I just get everybody to a hundred item levels first before investing into mop characters? So I have a brand new guide for this. God, everybody's throwing me the best softballs today and I really appreciate it. Um, if we head over to Gar guides, it's a link that's going to come up here. Um, look for my brand new blacksmithing contracts 101 guide. Uh, I just did a big guide on breaking down like what I feel is the efficient way to start. Well, just breaking out what are blacksmithing contracts and then how do I use them effectively? There's lots of questions I answer in there for people with blacksmithing contracts questions, but I go, I do go into talking about maybe how you should invest your item levels from those contracts. Um, and the priority in my opinion is speed champions because that, that that lets you gem farm gem farm uh, lets you buy chests chests give you blacksmithing contracts it's a nice little snowball once you're done with your speed champions i think it's uh, yeah i would say getting everybody to getting your your pushing group and everybody up to a good item level four of 100 item levels i think that's a good target for an average item level floor of power for all your champions uh, and then, Hey, if you want to, you can, you can either go into your favorite mop before that or after that, but eventually, yeah, into these mathematically OP champions so that you can really start pushing deep and completing content like the harder content. First Faulkner, how do you trigger Desmond's ultimate twice in 30 seconds? This is, we, I explained this earlier and I, we even had a question about it earlier. So let's do it again right here where he's about to be a full moon, hit the alts. Oh no, I did it too late. Well, look, we're going to pretend that I hit that right before it hit the full moon. So the moon, the moon phases in from the right side of the screen to the left side. Like right now we're going to the dark moon, right? Uh, so you want to see as the white's filling up the moon and it gets three quarters of the way full, hit the ultimate because the second it hits the full moon, it refreshes the ultimate. Then you can hit it again. It helps if you're, it makes it even easier, I think, if you're in the left spec, Desmond's left spec. Speeds up the phases of it. But yeah, that's how, that's how you do it. It's super easy. You just gotta, you gotta understand that he resets based off the phases of the moon. I'll try to, we'll, we'll give it a cycle. I'll try to do it again here in a minute. 
trying to do it again here in a minute. Uh, last question, because, because, because. Lurking Rider, since you played Valentine's Day, everyone listening on a previous show, which ruined your Kraken pun. Will you be playing Release the Kraken today and make a pun about Valentine's Day? No. I'm not even playing Release the Kraken today, but I guess I could. Hold on. You know what? Let me change it. I was going to play a different song. I was going to play a different song for the finale, but I'm going to go over and I'm going to change it right now because this is this is the Kraken's event. So let me change it to Release the Kraken. Uh... There, and somewhat redeem myself from last week. I was going to play Zorbu's Hate Makes You Cold. Zorbu was the OG Fleet's Wake champion, but one of my favorite songs. I love all the Idol Champion songs, but Zorbu's Hate Makes You Cold is one of my favorites. But okay, I set it up so we'll listen to Release the Kraken on the way out. All right, uh, that's going to be it, folks. Thanks for hanging out today. Thank you for asking the questions. Thank you, Gabe, for grabbing all the questions. Uh, there will be no more uh, streams this weekend on this channel. They'll come back on Tuesday. However, come hang out with me over at Twitch Gar twitch.tv slash Garwar. Just click on my name in there. Okay, toss me a follow. Uh, I play games over on my channel right now. The last we're, We've got a couple more streams of Have a Nice Death. Technically, we beat the game yesterday sort of but it's a roguelite so we got to keep doing it got to keep going um but i stream idle champions usually on mondays and wednesdays but again starting next wednesday i'm going to be streaming it all the time so toss me a follow come hang out uh, i will be streaming you have a nice death in about an hour if you want to come hang out today uh other than that, otherwise have a great weekend bye everybody Yeah.